Hello and welcome back. It is the Shepherd's Crook Podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day today. We are going to do another episode on boomers. I've done five or six episodes over the last six years on boomers and some of their issues and then some of our responses as younger men. And we're going to revisit some of these things today. And specifically, I'm going to do this by way of speaking about my father. There are several reasons that I want to do this, but mainly because I want to be able to put down on record some things about my dad that I don't want to forget years down the road. And maybe this will resonate with you as you're thinking through your father, thinking through maybe your grandfather or just your family in general, or the kind of man that you want to be, the kind of father that you want to be. And the practical application of the fifth commandment, which is honoring your father and mother. One of the things I'm fearful of for my generation is we have this okay boomer mentality and we look at the older generation that those specifically in that demographic with frustration and have all the caricatures of them, recognizing, of course, that there's some really great and awesome boomers, but the caricature as a whole. And one of the things I think is easy for us to do is in that way of mocking generations back and forth, boomers, of course, do this to millennials and then to Gen X and all this kind of stuff, or Gen whatever, all the generations make, making fun of each other. There can be some really good tongue in cheek, but if we're not careful, we actually create an environment that encourages people to dishonor their own father and mothers. And, and just because it's uh, it's the thing to do. And the OK Boomer mentality, I think, it comes with an inherent danger of encouraging our, our friends and brothers and sisters to do this, to dishonor their parents. And I think that is unhealthy. And so I think there's a better way to do it. And we're going to ask for the Lord's help. And I'm going to talk about five things that I appreciate about my father and then say a couple things about my dad right now and then call us to proactively honor our parents in the best way we can in accordance with God's word. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. I ask for blessing and I pray that you would help as this is uh, just always personal when we start talking about parents or our fathers, a father's absence or presence causes great, great good or great harm, depending upon the kind of man he was. And, and Lord, we want to do everything we can to, to see the positive and not dwell on the negative and honor you and, and honor our parents. And in so doing, if there's a culture like this, then, then we will live long in the land. And if we have a culture that dishonors parents, a culture that looks back on our heritage with hatred or frustration, we will not live long in this land. So God, I pray that there will be a culture that grows and develops from Christians outward in this country and around the world of honor towards our parents. Help us to do that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, just the reminders of the giveaway that's going on. We've got, I don't know, five or six days left on that great giveaway with Reformation Heritage Books on the Puritan Treasures for Today series. 15 books. It's a great paperback series. You want to check it out. You can sign up for free. I'll put the link in the show notes. And then all the other ads you're hearing, go ahead and check them out and jump online. Hey, listen, I want these to be helpful and profitable to those that I'm, I'm partnering with. And so if you're looking for supplements, if you're looking to get strong, go to Barbell Logic. If you're looking to uh, get some good books, go to, to Reformation Heritage and check out all that we have going on. That really is for you, the listener, to be able to get some good deals. And uh, and, and I, really, this is what, something I want to continue doing, partnering with companies and, and giving you some good giveaways and all that kind of stuff. So if you have enjoyed that, please do this, especially if you're a winner of the previous giveaways. I've been doing giveaways for about five or six years now and tried to do some really good giveaways. And we've had some really, I mean, bangers. And this is one of them. So go sign up and uh, spread the word if you would. That would be a big help. Okay, let's go through five reasons I appreciate Sam Sparks. That's my father. Uh, my dad is a unique character. If you know him, you know what I'm talking about. And really, as far back as I can remember, there's been a uniqueness to him. And a part of that is is just his lovability of being just, just who he is. He is who he is, and you can't change who he is. But I want to give these five things. Number one, my dad taught me to pray. My dad and mother both were Christians. They are Christians. Uh, my father, there's some things there that, that I scratched my head about. Uh, at this point, but I'll get to here in just a little bit. But one of the things when I was young was clear is that my dad taught me to pray. There's two examples of this. One time I was fishing and couldn't catch fish all day. I mean, all day long we were out fishing. This is something he, he did with me regularly. And I got frustrated and threw my fishing pole and ran to the truck. And he said, son, get back here with a you know loud voice. And he said, we're going to pray about this. And we get back and we pray. And instantly I catch seven fish. And that was a prayer of faith for my father that that God answered immediately, and I got to see that and have a memory for the rest of my life. And then the second thing was a baseball game at a Cardinals baseball game, and I was telling my dad, I want to, I want a baseball. Dad, I want a foul ball. We were sitting down the third base line, I think seven rows back. We had some really great seats. Barry Bonds was up. I think it was during the Pirate days, maybe right when he got with the Giants. And you know he's a lefty, swings the very next pitch after we prayed. That ball rolled right to my feet, and I got that ball. Just an amazing. I just prayer faith and God answered the prayer and it was awesome. Well, we prayed about everything growing up. We This is what my dad did. He taught me to pray. And it's not that my mother didn't. I'm just thinking through memories about my father. And he 
he, uh, th that's what he taught me is he taught me to pray always. And I appreciate that. So number one, he, he taught me to pray. Number two, he, he played with me a lot. We played a lot of sports together. We were always in the yard, had a great time in the yard playing baseball. And we lived in town, but we played baseball all the time. We were out, outside. I had this pitch back thing. I think my mom got that for me. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Dealing with a little bit of congestion. And we would just always go out. We, he would coach my baseball teams. We had a lot of fun, a lot of great memories, and we had some really good baseball teams. And to this day, I like, you know, every once in a while, just thinking about plays that I made at shortstop or the fun that my, my dad and I had together in those those times. It was so much fun. We went fishing together, like I always said. We, we loved fishing and had a great time going to my grandpa's farm. We rode bikes together. When I was five years old, my dad took me on a five-mile bike ride. Now, my dad always worked full-time. He was uh, Department of Corrections. When I was little, I think he was in the mines maybe, and then he was a bread man. And then after that, he got on at the DOC in Illinois and worked his entire career with, at Department of Corrections. Ended up being a food supervisor, so he, he did well there, even with the challenges that he had you know, as a man and, and some of the things that and mistakes that he made. He still did, did well with that, provided for us, all that kind of good stuff. And... So he, he always, uh, he, he was always there. So he was working full time, but then we would go on like a 30 mile bike ride on the weekend. And he, as a five-year-old with a little bitty bike, I, I rode 30 or like 27 to 30 miles, somewhere in there. We tried to estimate how, how far it was, but it was a long way for a, a little boy to go. We were like riding on highways and stuff, totally different day, but it was awesome. I appreciate that about him. He spent a lot of time with me and I have a lot of memories because of that. Uh, number three, hard work. My dad would annoy me because my buddies would come over and Joseph would be there. Micah would be there. Uh, it doesn't matter who was there. And my dad would have work for us to do. So you know how it is when you're growing up, you're spending the night with your buddies, your buddies are spending the night with you. And for years, it was like that. I had best friends for years. They'd come over and my dad would have work for us to do. I remember one time we were trying to make dynamite and blow up this backyard stump. We'd cut this stump down to the ground, but my dad was wanting to get down further into it. It was like a hard maple or something like that. And we had axes and we were trying to burn it out. We didn't we didn't want to go get a stump grinder. So me and Joseph had to take axes and burn. I mean, for I mean, it was like weekend after weekend after weekend. My buddy would come over and my dad would just put him to work at, along with me. There was always something to do. And he always, you know, we lived in town. He wanted to live out in the country, but there was always a project. So he taught me hard work. And and I appreciate that. Now I do, of course. We chopped firewood. We, there were so many things that we did. We worked with the uh, ministry at their church that was called His Hands Ministry and just did a lot of things together. We mowed yards together. He taught me to have a mowing business. He would require me to go out and get yards to mow. I had 14 yards one summer. I mean, 14 yards one summer. It was incredible. <laughs> Sorry for that. For everybody watching on YouTube, please forgive the uh, hawking the loogie there. On the audio, it was uh, x out of there. So sorry about that. But this was these are things that I appreciate about him that I admire about him. Uh, number four, he evangelized all the time. Oh, actually, you know what? There's another piece. Number three, uh, there was some practical sense there too. Uh, my dad didn't get caught up into what a lot of people got caught up into that were like, "Well, what do you want to do when you grow up?" This is my whole generation. You know, you got to find your passion and you'll never work a day in your life, kind of thing. And my dad was always like, "That is a load of garbage. Get who cares what you want to do? Go out and get a good job where you can provide for a family." That's, that's what he'd always say. And he was like Mike Rowe before Mike Rowe. He's always saying I should go be getting into HVAC or something like that, which would have been a great thing. You know, it's a, it's a good thing. And uh, so he had some horse sense about him. That, that was good. Uh, number four, he evangelized all the time. So he's always telling people about Jesus. When I was growing up, everywhere we would go, he would, you know, he, he really didn't have a lot of discretion about picking up hitchhikers. I mean, we'd be all in the car and he'd pick up a hitchhiker. You know, it's like, come on. I, I don't know about that. Uh, now, when, when you're thinking about little ones with you as well, but he was always telling pe people about Jesus. And I appreciate that to the point that I would kind of get embarrassed about that. Now, I, I see myself. I, this, these are obviously things that I want to replicate. And I probably embarrass my children a lot, too, by talking to people about Jesus when they're around. I mean, this is what I want to do. I'm, in a past, I'm a pastor, so I got to take every opportunity I get to talk with people that are lost because I'm spending time, as God would have me, with Christians all the time. So this is uh, a good thing. It's a good thing to replicate. Uh, number five, this might sound a little weird, but uh, I appreciate it. I was never abused. I was never physically abused. And this is something that he couldn't say. So he was mistreated. A lot of uh, boomers grew up in families of, of grandfathers or fathers, the, the greatest generation that were just emotionally disconnected for their entire life because they saw their brothers bleed out on the battlefield and came back completely just an emotional ghost. And there was a lot of a lot of things that, that boomers did see growing up that they didn't replicate. So I was never abused. I was never physically harmed. And I appreciate that. 
that that's really good. Um, so I, I want to give honor where honor is due. Now I could do a whole nother episode. I probably will at some point talking about my mother, but the specific reason I wanted to do this about my father is because what I see is a whole generation of people my age and younger who are looking to boomers and saying, you're just, you've destroyed everything. you like, you've just destroyed this country. You've destroyed everything. And I understand what they're saying. And a true and honest boomer would look at their generation and say, yeah, we've got some significant problems. Like a true and honest millennial would say, yeah, we've got some significant problems. And, and yet, if we look, especially with our own parents, our own fathers, we can find things that are honorable. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about my father. So my father now, and this is just, uh, I'm not going to say everything because I still want to honor him. My father is, is now in jail for the third time in the last three years. Uh, my dad has got a lot of issues, mental, and that is just because of spiritual rebellion over the years, where he lacks self-control, just basic self-control in areas of his life. Uh, there are, you know, it, there's uh, there's always difficulties if you're dealing with parents that have uh, some mental health issues. There's always a difficulty of knowing what is controllable and what isn't controllable in the mind. So you have spiritual, you know, rebellion, and you have these mental challenges that are there as well. And that's what we've been dealing with my father for, for, you know, a long time, for a very long time. He's very self-centered, thinks about himself. So there are things about my dad. If you know my dad, you know our situation. And, and everybody that's listening that doesn't know the situation, you don't need to know all the details. But it's not been, it's not been very fun, to be honest. It's been a lot of challenges. Uh, last three or four times I've talked with him, I've been cussed out. That That's, that's difficult. It's not fun. But, I have all this relational equity with him that's been built up over the years. And I recognize these things that I just talked about that so outweigh the current things that he's doing and dealing with for me, where I've got to honor him. And just because he's living in a way at this point, and maybe your dad is, is living in this way at this point, that's not honorable. We still have to honor dishonorable acting parents for a generation if we have the mentality that the boomers all are just awful, there's nothing to honor, then you are playing into what the Bible tells us will destroy the land. Because if you will not, if you refuse to honor those that go before you, refuse to honor your parents, and then your friends, your, our Christian brothers and sisters, refuse to honor their parents, and then they refuse to honor their parents, and we wonder why the West is being destroyed. Whereas, if... We look at our other parents' our lives, our generations' lives, the generations that have gone before us, and look and mind for the good, and then the recognize that like their generation, like our generation, there's also the bad. If we'll humbly look and say, what, what is the good there? What is it that I want to replicate? Well, then we can obey the fifth commandment to honor our father and mother. This is what we're called to do. And maybe you're like me and you're dealing with a parent that's got some mental health issues or something like that. Um, honor them. Honor them. Find what you can honor about them and honor them. It's a proactive command. This is not a reactive command. This is an honor. You're going to have to show action to honor your parents. And here's the deal. Sometimes when you are honoring your parents and honoring the Lord, your parents don't receive it as honor. It is true that some of the some of the ways that you're going to have to honor your parents sometimes is, is cut off relationally to not let them destroy your family. If you've, got a, if you've got parents like that, if you've got a father like that, to where you've got to make boundaries because the best way you can honor your parents is to be the best dad, the best husband you can possibly be to your wife, best dad you can be to your, your children, and not replicate the, the bad things. But if you have a parent that's trying to destroy your family, then you're going to have to make and, and draw some hard lines in the sand, and they're not going to receive that as honor, even though you are honoring them. But the main reason I wanted to see this is because I see right now, especially with everything going on in the Reformed world, you see this these uh, reform breakdowns and divisions that go back and forth. And you see Doug Wilson and the white boy summer guys, or you see everybody freaking out about Christian nationalism and then the Christian nationalism guys. And you see all the, the divisions that go back and forth everywhere. And a lot of this, it's like, all right, I can't control what the generation above me does or doesn't do. But as a 40 year old man and to all my brothers that are my age and younger or around my age, your obligation right now is to show honor. That's what your obligation is is to show honor and give honor where honor is due. And even if there are older men in our lives that are not acting honorable, and let's just say it's hard for you to find a good and godly boomer, and I, I get that, I understand that. And you go out to the internet world and you look at the guys that have gone before us, and you're looking at James White, or you're looking at, at Doug Wilson, and you are, are finding yourself dishonoring them in your heart and through your words and through your tweets. You are in sin. And you have to honor them. Find five things to honor about them. You have to. 
And it doesn't mean that you have to go around, you're, you know, you're just loving them and praising them and you're just a fanboy or something like that. But you do have to give honor where honor is due, because if not, we're creating a culture where real people, real sons and daughters of dishonorable parents feel like because my parents are dishonorable, because they're not making the best decisions or because they're doing things differently than I would or that I am currently doing, that I've got the out. I, I don't have to honor them. And that is rebellion against God. So honor your father and mother and live long in the land. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your day.